And yes? Just before you move on, can you talk about the two kinds of graphs? Ones with weighted edges and ones with mm -hmm. non-weighted edges. Right, so you have weighted and non-weighted, you also have a directed and non-directed edges, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so when you do have edges, you can not just indicate that there's a relationship, you can also indicate like the strength of the relationship, right? And sometimes the weight could be like a cost, it could be something like, hey, you know, these folks, for example, are really close. You also have, and so right now, today we're gonna to just look at unweighted graphs, but yeah, but you could have that, that could give you additional information on the nature of the relationship. Like maybe even if you have a social network, if two people are really close, contact each other a lot, those edges could have a weight, a value associated with it, right? And you also have the notion of directness, right? You can also have edges that basically are just connected to, and some edges have a direction, right? gets a lot of tools for talking about directed versus undirected and weighted versus one kind of weighted and stuff like that. You can talk about something called an adjacency matrix, which is just a way of representing a graph as a matrix. Like Today, you know, but you know, they were talking kind of big picture how to do some, you know, data, so you know, what about the data analysis on, on graphs? You know? Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Cool. So, All right. Circles, right, and edges are lines, right? That's that's a that's a way that graphs can be visualized. There are other ways. It don't think it's even the best one, but it's straightforward and just for teaching purposes, we figure, hey. So so again, never actually you just create a graph and they even have a bunch of stock graphs. You can create like complete graphs, star graphs, and barbell graphs. And we're gonna start talking about those just to give you a little bit of an insight into some properties of common graphs. And you can see them as subgraphs and larger graphs. And you can always draw a graph, just an X draw, okay? So right now, so this is a complete graph. And it's called a complete graph because every node is connected to every other node. Okay, very straightforward. Questions about this? Pretty self-explanatory. We also say like there are no edges missing. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely say that too. So I mean, nodes that are unconnected. Right, yeah. Okay, and then star graph, so for the star graph, this is what a star graph can, can look like. Now, in a case like this, in this case, you really are looking at a scenario where you have essentially, right, this guy in the middle, the hub. Some people call this also an ego network when you deal with social networks, right? And this is the ego at the center of the network. And the idea is that all those who are connected have to go through that center, okay? Now, and you'll see this again in certain in, um, in social networks, especially when you start getting into like very non-egalitarian types of social networks, like you know influencers or you know or crime families, right? You start to see more of this where the periphery don't really talk to each other. There's no connection, but they tend to go through a very central, very central person. Also, transportation networks like airports, right? Some airport hubs, right? They tend to radiate out, and you get from one point to another by going through go through your center. Okay. And again, these are things where if you are able to visualize a larger graph, you can see these as substructures. Not necessarily as perfect substructures. In some cases, it might be a little noisier. There might be a few edges connecting. But you start to see things like that, and it'll give you a general sense of the underlying phenomena and even some properties. Okay, questions? Again, we also have the barbell graph. And so I don't time talk about that because they kind of play a little bit more into what I have to say. So here's the barbell graph. Raise your hand if you don't know why this is called a barbell graph. <laughs> okay, good, good. There's hope for everyone here. So, um, so again, this and this is pretty much, you know, you've got a cluster, a fully connected subgraph here, right? A complete subgraph, and over at the end, you've got another complete subgraph, and then you have a very thin bridge connected. Okay. And again, one of the things about this graph is that it's one of those where you can disrupt it by hitting key parts, right? You know, something like this is quite connected. If you imagine like removing a random edge, these guys can still manage to get to each other through other nodes. But you hit one of the key edges here, and you can at least sever these two communities. So think in terms of, again, if you're looking at, say, social networks, and you're looking at communities that are relatively loosely connected to each other, the type of connected within themselves, you'll see structures somewhat similar to this. Again, noisier, but that's generally something that you'll see. Just a comment. In, in this type of situation, you know, there are different interpretations for the nodes that are like on the bridge. Just, but just as an example, if you're looking at a network of people 
You might be <clears throat> talking to the people, the nodes on the bridge might represent individuals that kind of pass along key messages or act as facilitators between the two groups or, or something along those lines. So, cool. Questions? Like influencers, maybe, in the social in the media yeah. context? You know, like, get a rich in the connection between two pretty active sectors. I that, but yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I wanted... you can yeah, you can see like if you got like two like very uh, like like two clicks or even two like say influencers or not much to talk to each other, but they have a few like uh, followers in common, and that's kind of like their connection. Yeah, you can definitely see something like that there. Any scenario we have communities that are connected to other communities but not nowhere near as strong. So maybe like there's two separate Discord servers and they have like a few common members. Or... Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think a new way is the representative what the first thing I came to mind for me was kind of like roads. Where yeah. the best of player would be cities and then you, know, you have the highway yeah. and then you have the yeah. yeah, very nice. Yeah, exactly. To be cities, this could be some lonely highway kind of the nowhere no connecting these two cities. But within the cities, you have a lot of points that basically can you know you can go to, right? If something happens and one of the roads is under construction in the cities, you've got the routes you can get around, right? If, if there's something wrong with the road here, well good luck on uh, getting out of uh, you know, how yeah. tall are they? Well, hopefully you have some redundant path. But if you don't, yeah. then yeah, then we call that an easily disrupted network, right? Yeah. So that's exactly. again, nodes like on the bridge are nodes that you can take them out and easily just disrupt the network. Right. And then you have solutions of like robustness, right? How much yeah. can you disrupt the network without you really severing portions of it? Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. Yes. Do you have a slide on bike park date graphs? So. That's it. Not today, but I do have one that I was hoping to do for a future one. In fact, like the product customer example, that's actually by part time grab and actually did that in a previous role when I was in for part bundles. Okay. So I can, um, if we have time after, I can definitely just show you what happened. No, but that's a really, really good one to talk about like on its own because it's got a lot of really nice properties and yeah, that's like a whole. Oh, awesome. yeah, so there's weight, like yeah. weighted graphs, directed graphs, then you use the bipartite graphs where, yeah. where you have basically two, two uh, sets that don't communicate with uh, among themselves, but they do communicate to each yeah. other. Uh, yeah. that, that's, then you have uh, multi-graphs, which you have multiple edges connect, connecting to those, which I don't know what that means, but anyway. <laughs> so there are a lot of different yeah. bells and whistles that can be added to, to, yeah. to make different classes of graphs. But, but, but I do want to comment also, um, so yeah, so the whole idea of my part type graph, I won't go too much into it, but it does illustrate something important too. And a lot of these graphs, we assume that nodes are basically of the same type. They can connect to each other. When you get into like certain types of graphs like my part types, sometimes nodes are of a different type. They'll connect to one set of nodes, but not to another. And that indicates that they're not really qualitatively like the same, they belong to different groups. And that's something that, you know, we're not assuming here, but yeah, but that's definitely something that we would get. So I definitely hope that if you do, uh, a follow up, I'd love to do a bipartite example with products. Yeah. So, what you're saying is segregation is a big part of graph theory? We prefer to call it partition. They're actually connected across the partition. Yeah. So, every node would have to have at least one edge across the partition. They're, they're not really segregated in the sense that you would have two different, say, right. node forests where one group of nodes doesn't connect to another group of nodes. Right. So look at something like this, right? These are not connected to each other, but they're connected here. Exactly. These aren't connected to each other. Yeah, so yeah, that's the part the, the two groups are actually very connected. In fact, there are only connections between the two groups. Um, not within, not within the groups. Right. Okay. Can yeah. we draw circles around the groups just to highlight sure. that? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So here's one group, right? And then here's your other group. Yeah. And so again, connections. From one group to another, but not within a group. And that's a bipartite. And you mentioned, and you've got multi part part that go beyond that, but this has some really nice applications. Yeah, multi part If you start doing your relationships with graph theory, then being able to detect these kinds of partitions, groups, they start to tell you things about like you know, different categories of information mm -hmm. right, that you can discover dynamically. So yeah. You can start out with a graph that's not bipartite, at least not on the face of it, but you can do a little bit of analysis to figure out what the groups are and then split them out, split them yeah. and say, oh, look, actually now it's a bi I see I can be a bi I can look at it as a bipartite group. Yeah. And they can, yeah. And they can there's certain conditions it has to satisfy for yeah. that to make that true, but you know. 
Yeah, I might be looking at a graph and you don't know it's a bipartite graph until you do some analysis to figure it out. Yeah, but if you don't know that it, it can be looked at as a, as a bipartite graph. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Well, thanks for bringing that up. That's my favorite type of graph. Okay. Okay. It is. Okay. Yeah, we'll, right. we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, <laughs> that's all I got. Man, my favorite type of graph. I have a favorite type of graph, and it is the bipartite graph. Yes. But you need to work with the real markers. Markers. You need to work with food. So okay. So we have some visualizations on graphs. Okay. Now I'm going to show you another graph, and I want you to tell me what you can infer about it, okay? And I'll, I'll give you a few minutes, okay? Go ahead, what can you tell me about this graph? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, that, that, that's 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 No, I just... <laughs> <laughs> that's a right answer, sir. <laughs> Edward, what can you tell me about this graph? It's highly connected. It was, it was painted by David Bowie. <laughs> you ask the question, the answer is it's blue. No. <laughs> That's as good as. <laughs> as far as hardware, you don't really need to use a switch with that. You could just use a hub for all of those. Um, mm. no. <laughs> <laughs> so the truth is, is that graphs in a visual representation, I think I know where you're going with this. Graphs in a visual representation become hard to process once the node count crawls too high. Yes. Unless it's already been organized into groups for you. But when you don't have that organization ahead of time visually, mm -hmm. it's basically noise. Yeah, exactly, exactly, right. And this isn't even large by network standards. This is only a thousand nodes. You can run into ones with you know over a hundred thousand nodes. So the idea is you have a big massive data set that you represent as a graph and you want to get some insight into it, but visualization is not really an option. And you're right, some visuals there's some ways you can kind of help your visualization along, but usually you get a situation like this, you want to start relying on metrics. And that kind of justifies why I want to talk about some of the key metrics. And this one pretty much. Yes. Okay, so speaking of metrics, that means my turn. Yep. You try that for math. Wow, okay. Yeah, okay. math <laughs> monkey. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> we're talking about uh, some metric, a few metrics, and um, and sort of what they, what they, you know, the sort of qualitative information they give you about uh, graphs. So, <coughs> uh, yeah, we'll give, we'll give, we'll give. Right. so first uh, metric is called density. The opposite of dense is sparse, then you probably get an idea of what we're talking about already, right? So, um, <coughs> uh, you just form a ratio, you have a particular graph, so uh, well, how many edges are existing in the graph, right? How many connections do we have? And divide that by the number of possible edges, which by that by that I mean what? Like, you know, if it were a you know complete fully connected graph, how many edges would it have, right? So number of actual divided by number of possible, right? It has a neat little formula, uh, if you care. Uh, if E is the number of edges and N is the number of nodes, uh, the density can be calculated like this, which is you know, unlike some metrics, it has a nice straightforward formula. So it's not taking up you know, your CPU. Right. Or if you're a programmer, just call it NX.S. Right? <laughs> 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 huh? Programmers need to know the math. The reason that there's N in the denominator is because there's N nodes that could be the source. And the reason that it's multiplied against N minus 1 is because assuming that you're not connecting back to yourself, you could connect to any other node. So that's, that's how you get your denominator. And you have so, so that's one interpretation. But um, so there, if you if you you can read the, the this this right down here, which is a combinatorial explanation. But anyhow, so this is um, so this is how it could be uh, calculated. Uh, notice that number one it, uh, it ranges from zero to one. So it's a fraction between zero and one. You know, one being a fully connected graph, zero being you know it's like a bunch of unconnected dots, right? So that's you know it's sort of a gross uh, measure of how you know how well connected the graph is, right? All right, so moving on. 
Well, okay, yeah, let's do, let's do, let's do a couple guessing games. All right, so what's the density of this graph? One, one, right? It's fully connected, no edges are missing, right? It's a, this, this has a density of one. Okay. Uh, uh, what's the density of this one? Yeah. <laughs> you can't really eyeball it. It's like uh, it's not it's not one, right? It's not zero. Yeah, uh, maybe you can eyeball it. Okay. One over eight, one over one over eight, one over nine, one over ten. This is in the this is in the neighborhood. I know. Nine is nine over ten times nine, and two times nine. Okay, yeah, that's actually yeah, that's not bad. So let's do the reveal. Okay, that's pretty close. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, you could eyeball. I lied. I lied. You could eyeball. I just was too lazy. So okay. All right. So how about the barbell graph? Something we did do no in one. That's, that's the answer I was looking for. That is a right number precise. Inclusive. I think it's more than star. Less than star. That's good. Than star? More than star. Less than complete. Yeah. So as you change this one, like making the bar longer, you can change the bounds. Sure. Well, if you made yeah, the, like, if you you made the, the bridge longer, you're adding, so you're adding those, but you're also adding edges, right? So if you have one node, you're going to add two edges, <laughs> right? So. Yeah, How's that going to work? Yeah. We also have so you're gonna, the numerator is going gonna, is gonna to double, or, or no, it's going to be, no, it's not going to double. It's going to um, go up by, it's gonna go by two, but the denominator. The numerator will grow by O is one, but the denominator will grow by O being squared. So basically, you will, if you add to the middle of the barbell, you will always get a lower density. Yeah, it's going to be asked about that. There's a lot of other nodes you could be connected to that your heart is, yeah. Okay, so very good. I guess we're not between zero and one. Can uh, we, do you think it's more than a star graph? Okay. That's a good place? Yeah. Yeah, right away. It depends on how big your bell is. Well, yeah, I mean, in this case, just this one. That, just, just this one, yeah. We're not talking like a bell, 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 bell. Yeah. So you got 0 0.3, 0 0.31, yeah. All right. Okay, cool. So, so that's the idea. Okay, so that's density. I think that's that's a pretty straightforward metric. All right, clustering, clustering, you probably... And just give an idea of why density matters. Like, why would you care about density? So, because if you, if you deal with the underlying data, the density gives you an idea of at least how many connections yeah. are... Like how easily right? traversable the graph is, for example. Any number of things like that, yeah. You know, more dense, more robust. Yeah. So, that kind of thing. Clustering. All right, clustering. Who knows what a cluster is? Wow. Okay. That's all. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, no. Has anyone uh, been inside of a cluster? <laughs> no, right. That's right. That's right. That was a cluster. That's right. Mm -hmm. You're looking at your data set, just a bunch of things that appear and appear to each other. Yeah, they just think things that are somehow connected. In this case, in this context, we're kind of talking about connections, but like, Generally, you know, you have a bunch of data points, and you know, the data points are that are close in some sense, right? Uh, like you might have a metric or something that would be doing like, you know, a clustering algorithm that determines, you know, what what groups of points are close to each other, right? Forming groups. And we have also, have a, also I think you have a hand up. Oh yeah. So could you think of it now like a local maximum for intensity? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I would. Uh, so I would. I would definitely say something along those lines. Like I would say that, yeah, locally, very dense. Yeah, so locally, like high density is, is one way to talk about it. Yeah. Is that, is that what you mean there? Or yeah. just leave yeah. that? Okay. Like that. Okay. Cool. So, okay, so did you wanna, okay, so. Oh, so scroll up and we can do, uh, sure. So we're gonna talk about briefly about how they, you know, how, like what the, you know, the math is behind these things, uh, you know, just, to a certain extent, but then we're going to talk about more more what they mean. Right. So to to get you know how these th how a clustering coefficient is calculated, we need to talk about what uh, two two things. One one is a triple, one is a triangle. They have pretty intuitive def definition. So in a graph, you have you have a triple if you just have you know three nodes, right? 
Uh, and, and there are two connections that exist. So you have maybe one, one node is at the center, right? And out from that node is emanating a couple of edges, and at the end of those edges, you have other nodes, right? So that we call that a triple. So three, three nodes that are connected, only necessarily two edges there, okay? Um, so it, it doesn't, we, we can still call it a triple if the third edge is there. We can still call it a triple, but at least two edges. Right? So a triangle is when the third edge is there. Right? So, you know, just to make it absolutely clear. At least two of the nodes are connected. So I can have, if the definition is true, if there three edges, I can have two connected and this guy damaged. That's not say true then. Um, well, we have, so we have like three. Sorry, that's a question. Yeah, and that's so right there. if no, you no. remove one of the edges, then then it's not the triple. Because yes. the definition is true. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So that is more restrictive. So you can have the, the trick to remove one of the connections to the triple and it's still a triple. Remove that. No. Right? Well, it says at least two of each other. So connected. this has one. So oh, that's that's at least two. At least two. The definition says at least two of the nodes are directly connected. Yeah, so oh, 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 is that two edges? I see what you're saying. Yes. Good. 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 At least two pairs of which. Thank you. Yeah. At least two edges. At least two pairs of which. So there's at least two edges there. Okay. Yeah. So my fault. Yeah. All right. So so okay. So this is our working definition. <laughs> our okay. pictures, right? Triple, triangle. Right? But a triangle also meets the definition of triple. Mm -hmm. right? So, <clears throat> so okay. So you can think of you can think of a, a triple that ha that does have that missing edge as sort of a, like a missed like a missed a missed opportunity for for a connection, right? So, that's where a connection could have been there, but it wasn't, right? So keep that in mind. So if you if you take the number of triangles that occur in the node, right, that's the number of, the number of instances where that connection was made, right? You have this one node, two adjacent nodes, and that connection between the adjacent nodes was made, right? And we divide that by the number of triples, right, which is the total number of times uh, you know that there was an opportunity, regardless of whether or not that connection was actually made, right? So again, triples exist within triangles, right? So this triangle. So when we count the number, the total number of triples, we're, we're counting the number of triples that also exist within triangles, right? So <clears throat> that denominator is always bigger than that numerator, right? So always, hmm? always. Well, unless they're equal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay, they could be equal. That's true. <laughs> All right. And right, the connected graph, fully connected graph, are always right. Okay. So. Um, all right, so it, it just, uh, by, the, by the way, if the denominator does happen to be zero, which can happen, uh, uh, I'll leave it to you to think about how the denominator could be zero. Um, <clears throat> uh, if, in that case, we, we set the cluster coefficient equal to zero. Okay, and by the way, if the denominator is equal to zero, then what do we say? It's about the fraction. An animal. <laughs> it's a what? Uh, it's an one. animal. It's an animal. Like so it's a, it's a, a fraction with a zero in the denominator is, go back to high school class, what? An animal? Okay. It's undefined. Yeah, it's undefined. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, <laughs> so yeah, so, so that's why so the denominator does have to be zero. We set the equestrian coefficient equal to zero. Uh, and again, this is a node-wise uh, quantity, right? So it's a, every, every node in the graph is going to have a cluster coefficient. Calculate the cluster coefficient of the graph, you just average over all the nodes. Okay? Pretty or straight. you could just call average clustering. Okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> all right, so what does all this have to do with actual clustering? Right, so okay, if I, if, I, if I were to draw this, right, just as an example, how many triples are there? Two, three. One, two, three. Not only three, right? Okay, Whoa. what's the clustering coefficient of this central node? Oh boy. <laughs> zero. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this, this is like a zero clustering situation. What if I did that? What's the clustering coefficient? Mm -hmm. One three. Right, one third, right? What about that? Right. So this is, again, this is fully, that's a fully, now it's fully connected. So this is sort of your prototypical 
uh, you know, a picture of you know a, a node with a very high clustering coefficient. Okay. So that looks kind of like a cluster. So again, I guess. Uh, uh, well, okay, I don't want to get too much away. So all right, let's think about let's think about the graphs now. So clustering coefficient, any ideas? Complete graph. It's what? Yeah. It doesn't like. Does it look very clustered? Does it look like there are distinct groups? But everywhere you look, it's all triangles, right? There's not distinct groups, right? Like it's just. But in fact, it's just one big, highly connected group. So in, in a sense, it's just like one big cluster. Right. <laughs> I just have to say. That. I have to say. That. So okay. the clustering coefficient goes as the property of a node. That's for the, the whole graph. Correct. Right. Yeah, yeah, but it's just. Average. I mean, to to make it a global metric, you just average over the node. It's not super clever. Yeah. But <clears throat> yeah, there's at least a metric that go per node that's trying to be global metrics, which kind of ones that all like cluster. Uh, so what do you think? Clustering coefficient? Saga? Yeah, right, exactly. There are no triangles formed, right? So a lot of missed opportunities for triangle formation here. So ma the maximum number of missed opportunities. <laughs> Plus the gateway wizard. Plus the gateway wizard. It's not my friend. All right, barbell. Well, we're gonna uh, oh, I did the reveal. Anyway, did the reveal. It's between zero and one. All right, so it's about 0. 0.7. But you can see a lot of triangles here, and then not much here. But yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So the next metric we'll talk about is assortativity, in particular degree assortativity. Assortativity is a measure of uh, how 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 uh, similar types of nodes uh, tend to be connected, or not. Okay, so you can you can define assortativity in terms of uh, any sort of similarity that you want. Okay, so you can talk about similar nodes, uh, similar atom points. Uh, yeah, like every value is associated with nodes. You have similarity yeah. in terms of that, but in this case, we're just looking any at value that you can associate with a, with a node, a node, a particular node, right? You can talk about how similar two nodes are by some metric or some measure of similarity. But in this case. Uh, we're going to talk about degree similarity. So the, uh, the first thing you need to know is what is degree? The degree of a node. What's the degree of a node? How many connections? Yeah, how many connections it has. So how many edges it has sort of emanating out of it, right? Connected right. to some other node, right? Okay, so that's what the degree of a node is. So in this in this instance, what we're talking about is how how likely is it, or how, what is the tendency? We're trying to measure the tendency of nodes with, you know, say high degree to be also connected to other many other nodes in the graph that have high degree as well. Okay, and vice versa, with low degree. Right. So that's why it's called assortativity. So like you have connections between like individuals, right? Or like and like nodes, and like or whatever. Uh, okay, so um, uh, the, uh, from from a math point of view, so what assortativity often is is a correlation coefficient. The typical co correlation coefficient that's chosen is the Pearson's correlation coefficient. Real quick, does everyone know what a correlation coefficient is? We need uh, just to explain a little bit. Yeah. So, so it's very, very high level terms. So yeah, the idea of a, uh, a correlation, of course, is that you know things are correlated if they are somehow uh, related to each other. You know, one goes up, the other one goes up. One goes down, the other one goes down. So they kind of move together. All right. So uh, that's you know your mini you know statistics uh, explanation. In this context, what we what we have to uh, Remember is one sec, is that is that a co if a correlation is close to uh, close to one, then it is um, it, it means uh, that's a high that's considered a high degree of uh, relationship or you know proportionality. You know when they both they, they move together. The two values will tend to move together. And if they're ne if it's negative, if you're close to negative one, um, they will tend to move in opposite directions. And anywhere in the middle, like towards zero, there's no real relationship being observed. So, and, and by the FYI, uh, uh, it's always between negative one and one. So a correlation coefficient is always scaled such that it's between negative one and one. What was the question in the corner? Mm. Oh, okay. You already covered it. I was gonna say that correlation also includes when they don't move together, when they move. 
in a way that you can project them against each other. Yeah, so it's perfect. Yeah. So it could be a sort of inversely correlated, like when one, you know, they move in, they always tend to move, in, not always, always tend to move, it's like an oxymoron, but they tend to move in opposite directions, right? <clears throat> uh, or or if, if the core, again, if it's, if it's closer to zero, kind of in, in between, it's really just no, there's no significant relationship there, okay? So, so the measure is, uh, again, it's scaled to be between negative one and one. Um, FYI, when, when the assortativity is close to negative one, there's another term that's sometimes used, it's disassortative. Okay, disassortative. So it's, it's not really, it doesn't quite make sense to talk about, uh, well, I mean, you could say it, you know, if you could say negative assortativity, but that's what that means. It, it, that's, that there, there's no, assortativity is not really present, right? Um, in fact, it's the opposite. It's not, yeah, it's not, it's stronger than it's not present, it's that it's opposite, it's, it's the opposite, right? Negatively assorted, assorted. Okay, okay, so, and just remember, if you just call degree assortativity equal, you don't feel like, you know, <laughs> just enough back. Is, okay. You have to know kind of what it means, right? So, but, uh, yeah. so then we're just trying, we're aiming to get just enough explanation so you know what it means, right? So, okay. Um, Let's talk about these, these examples now that we have some idea what assortativity, degree assortativity is. So again, what's the degree of this node? Four. Four, right. What's the degree of all the nodes? Four. Four. So you say hi, what do you think the assortativity uh, is for the degree assortativity? One. Four. 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 One. <laughs> zero. <laughs> zero. <laughs> zero. <laughs> zero. One. Zero. I vote for four. <laughs> so what do you think it is? I'll give a bonus point to anyone one. who can answer. <laughs> one, zero. Zero, zero, one, zero. Okay. And the reveal is <laughs> the reveal. not a number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Why this is not a number. This, this has to do with the, the way you calculated the Pearson correlation hmm. coefficient. So because the mean because the mean degree is is uh so okay. You know what a standard deviation is? Yes. All right. If a standard deviation is zero, what does that mean? If you have a data set and your standard deviation is zero, what does that mean? All, all the data points are the same. Yeah. They're the same point, right? So when you normalize, when you, when you take when you take your your um, again the cor the correlation is computed by normalization by the uh, standard deviation. So if your standard deviation is zero, that means you're dividing by zero. Okay. So why is the standard deviation zero here? Because the degrees are what? They're all the same. The degrees of every node are, are, is the same. They're all four, right? So this gives you, that means that when you actually compile the data from which you have to compute that standard deviation, you get a standard deviation of zero. And we go to do the correlation coefficient, you end up dividing by zero. Okay, so that's what that is. I mean, it doesn't have a super awesome interpretation other than that, but as far as I can tell. Okay. Less cheesy example, what is it? Or even high, low, even throw it out. High, low. Guaranteed to lose. Yeah, we have five deviations, so there will be a small number. Maybe a small number. Close, 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 to close to zero. Well, I mean, is it okay? Okay. Okay. I'm going to agree and one more number. Well, actually, no. No, no. Like I said, there's only one out of the yeah, 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 but yeah. if you're just, but don't just think about standard deviation, right? Like that's, so if you think about like the nodes in here that exist that are connected to nodes that are very different in their degree, right? So what about the middle node, right? So what type of nodes are, is, the, are, is the middle node connected to? All these outside, out, no, nodes on the outside, right? What are the nodes, what are their degrees? Right, what's the degree of the middle node? So, right, right, so, so is, is that assortativity? Is that like yes, very assortative? Or so, it's, 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 it's actually it's, that particular example is an example of disassortativity, right? You have a very high degree node connected to a low degree node, right? But that's just one example, right? So we're, we're looking at the graph as a whole. Probably a negative one node. <laughs> 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 I'm to reveal. Oh, I, 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 I thought you should have told me not to reveal. 
So anyway, yeah, it's negative one. Because again, well, if you, if there's only one other type of node, right? There's the middle node, right? It's obviously it's a very disordered situation. But what about, what about the, out, the nodes on the outside? Well, it's the same thing, we're just in reverse, right? I have a one degree node out here connected to like only one other node, and that node is super high degree, right? So this is a very disassortative situation. In fact, it's, it's the maximally disassortative situation, right? So that's why you get the coefficient of negative one. Okay, so what do you think, barbell? Barbell, what do you think of this one? Zero. Positive. Positive. Okay, zero. Point forty two. Zero. Point forty two. That's really suspicious. Uh, uh, so, like, like inside, inside here is like you know kind of highly assorted, right? Inside these two clusters, it's like kind of highly assorted. Very. Can I reveal? Can I reveal? Reveal. Thank you, sir. Drum roll. Drum roll. Point two. Positive. Point two. Positive. Yeah. Not very high, right. Okay, next, uh, next, uh, okay, so we're done with those metrics, right? Degree distribution. Now we're talking about uh, degree distribution. So degree distribution um, is, so now that we know what degree is, right, we can talk about that. So, so every node has a degree, right? Some nodes are gonna be very high degree, and again, that means what? That means they're highly connected to other nodes, right? Some nodes are gonna have very low degree, so they're not very connected. Some nodes are going to be in the middle, right? So the distribution of this number that we call degree, right, is called what we call the uh, degree distribution, and you can plot it as a histogram, right? So let's see the, let's see the now this is part of big graph. That's a part so of the this is a, this is that big mess of uh, a graph that he put on the board a while ago, with a thousand nodes, right? Oh, Huh? It just says so accusingly. Anyway, continue. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I noticed you were putting a big messy graph on the board. Yeah, but you did. Like, and you were totally. That was not the point. Yeah. 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 I don't want to start a fight. Okay. We'll do it for later. We'll do it We'll talk about this later. All right. Okay. okay. So. <laughs> All right. So this is the distribution of the degrees in that uh, that obvious big mess of graph. So. Um, Constructed. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So what do we what do we see? So the x-axis is you know the the, degree, the, uh, the yeah. uh, degrees, right? So you know over here we have zero degrees, you know, here's twenty, you know, we're implementing you know zero, twenty, forty, sixty, so on. And then uh, and this being a histogram, this is a count, right? The bars are, are counts. So we have very high count far on the left, you know, kind of quickly sort of petering out of it and, and to very low counts, right? So what does that mean? It means like what? We have the big mass, the, the big, the, the big, uh, the bulk of the nodes have very what? High degree or low degree? The bulk of the nodes have very low degree, right? So that's these are the degrees down here. You know, but the bulk of that that's twenty. So I would say that this whole, you know, that's the bulk of the nodes to the left of twenty, say, and the rest of it are, are the other the, the other ones, right? So. Uh, one thing to note about this is that it does taper off very quickly, and but and but but and it, the the um, we do have quite a few you know outliers. It keeps going, right? They're still there, right? They're still there. There's one way out here, right? So what's the degree? Uh, there's one more. Yeah, right. the <laughs> how many how many nodes is that? One. It's one. Note. And what's its degree? It's like about what? 155. So it's an extremely well connected node. So this this is called a, a power law distribution. That's actually if you show the code, right? Mm -hmm. This is uh, isn't there a code? Oh, oh no, that's our right. don't scroll back. Oh, this is the power law graph. Yeah. So there's a, there's a function. There's you can do nx dot what power law yeah, graph, like power law. something like that to, like to sort law. of uh, generate random graphs that have this type of structure. Yeah. And we'll have if you plot the degree distribution, we'll look something like this, right? Yeah. This is very distinctive. Uh, uh, shape so where all the mass is, is pushed over to the left. It's highly skewed to the left, but you have like uh, actually more outliers than you might imagine. Right? Yeah. So, um, so what what is the structure that sort of comes to your mind? What sort of a structure that comes to your mind when when you look at this? No, I mean like the structure of the graph. Oh, 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 you're saying you mean like chi squared, the chi squared distribution? No, no, so I mean like the structure of the graph, right? Yeah, it's social media. Social media, why? Because you will have most people having only like 
less than 20 installation. Well, yeah. depends. Yeah, because 20 or less mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. have influence it would be the outlier. Yeah, yeah. So depending on the platform, maybe like Twitter or something. Twitter is kind of famous for having like one person with a million followers, you know, something like that. So yeah, so that's what these sort of like extreme outliers over here are representing. They're representing nodes of the graph that are extremely well connected, right? But the bulk, you know, the common gravel, they're all over here with like 20 or less connections, right? So <clears throat> that's the idea. So you have you have a you know a big graph with you know a few, you know, a kind of a short list of highly influential nodes. So that's the structure we're talking about. So I, obviously you can imagine graphs that are not like this, right? But uh, th this is thought to be the type of structure you see in social media and, and the internet and, and in general as a, like a, you know, like the actual the, the network that represents the hardware, you know, connections between the hardware and stuff. Um, that's a controversial topic, by the way, if you look into it. It's not, some people have uh, claimed that it's not a power law uh, distribution. Um, some people have published papers saying it is, and people have published papers against that. Uh, and, and, but one big takeaway is that regardless of whether it fits the actual technical definition of a power law distribution, which we're not covering, but, the, it, but what's more important than that is that the, the existence of these outliers. Because that, that's, what, that's what tells you that there's a short list of very influential, uh, highly connected nodes in, the, in there, regardless of you know, whatever the technical details are, you know, power law distribution. All right. So okay. all right, spot the, the next thing is class X class spot the spot the power law distribution. Two graphs. Which one do you think has a power law distribution or a power law ish? Graph A or graph B? Graph B. Graph I hear a graph B. A or B? Yeah, B. Who's, who's A? The eye doctor. B. 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 Yeah, B. Why? Uh, isn't A like the highest, the, the greatest uh, uh, degree is like four or something like that? Um, there's a few that have like three or four, yeah. Um, but uh, there's a bigger difference in that. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. here, there are only two, there are two that have more than five. Yeah. Only a five. Yeah. Yeah. And then we go back. Yeah. And, and yeah. so it seems to be a correlation between this and cluster. This will probably be better cluster. Okay, let me talk about that for a second. Right? Like so better. remember the idea of clustering. What's the clustering coefficient of, uh, of can you just close that one? What's the clustering coefficient here? Negative one? No, zero. <laughs> no, 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 that was with the uh, sort of previous round number. Yeah, yeah we're, we're just waiting to spring that out. That was sort of timid, right? That was a core correlation. Clustering coefficient between zero and yeah, one. Yeah, clustering coefficients between zero and one always. So remember? How many triangles do you see? That one by one. So how many, yeah, how many triangles versus how many triples? Hmm? Zero, zero, zero. Lots of triples, no triangles. That's it. So what's the clustering coefficient? Zero. It's zero. You guys asked her when I put it on the board. Yeah. Remember, this is why I drew this over on the board. I drew it about, right? He told me, you did bad night. He said, that cluster coefficient zero. Right? I like these people, man. Don't worry. Too much math. They're like friends. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure. The collectivity of the whole graph seems to be zero. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then the one with the one. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, so we see a lot of triples in the denominator, right? But like zero triangles. So, I mean, there might be some, there's some triangles. No, no, no triangles? No. Doesn't mean it's drawn. Okay, okay. all right. But there's, yeah, so, it doesn't it seems to be that this is the power law, right? Well, so, okay. So, okay, so that, was a, that was a tangent into clustering. Is this a cluster? Oh, a cluster. Or, yes. Is this a cluster or not? Yeah, yeah. this is not, this is no cluster. So, so here's the first, right? Wait, wait. So, okay, so we did conclude that this was yeah. the one. That, that's at least that's what we're saying. Okay, let's see if we can see the distribution now. Okay, gotcha. So I here's our distribution for A. Here's the distribution for B. Mm. Right. And small sample size granted, but it does have that power law ish fat tail and rapid drop. Yeah. 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 So this is yeah, roughly what you see for power law distribution. Okay. Yeah. Questions? Good. Okay. So. 
So here, right, so this one is uh, actual, an actual real life data. I'm not going to tell you what the data is from. Yeah. We're first going to kind of look at it, try to see what insights we get, and then we'll tell you what this data is. Okay? But right, so right now, this is just pulling some data from, from online. Okay? And then basically, we have the graphs, but we're going to keep the graphs for now. And instead, we want to look at them. It's a, this is a time series. It is a time series. You have 11, 11, 11 separate graphs of related phenomena over time. And before talking about what the phenomena is, we want to get an idea if we can at least look at the metrics and get a sense of what might be happening with our data and what we need to look at. So we have here graphs so, for, mm -hmm. but, but another question. I can talk. So we have graphs for density, clustering, and assortativity. We'll have the power law in a moment. And here we have the plots and the trend lines. So you can see how they vary it and what the rough trend is for each one, right? So just looking at some of this data, just kind of spitballing, what looks like is happening with this graph over time? Just look at these different vectors. Just kind of throw out ideas, brainstorm. Yes? So we've been so used to tracing over time, but your clustering, actually, your trend line is too poorly fit into the graph mm -hmm. to make any decision as to what happens. Mm -hmm. It could be periodic, mm -hmm. it could be something else. Yeah. Good. Good. What about a sort of tip? It seems to be an upward trend, but you don't really have enough data to really yeah. nail it down as permanent. Yeah. Kai, you're... Well, density means there's more triangles, but then the density means there's, there's less connection. Well, sort of tip is a tendency of nodes to connect to nodes of similar degree, right? The cluster is going to be the one with the triangles, right? So the density is going to be the number of edges, or rather, rather the ratio of edges, right? The possible edges. The cluster is going to have to do with the triangles. <laughs> And then the sort of tendency is the tendency of nodes to connect to nodes of a similar degree. Right? So we see the sort of activity, we see, you know, so the idea is that if your sort of activity is changing, right, the yeah. tendency of the nodes. Yeah, the yeah, 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 more economy to with time. That, that so take a look, everybody take a look at the y axis of the sort of activity just to. Yeah. Also, also, yeah, also, yeah. It is a very small axis range, just keep in mind. The sort of, I mean, it's all this is sort of, right? It's all negative. Right, it's kind of less negative. It's kind of less negative, right? Less negative, yeah. So, yeah, it's a, so with the sort of you have to remember, distinguish between positive and negative, right? They're kind of, they're different situations, right? Yeah, so it's turning towards, like, getting closer to zero, right? So it's like, so the, the correlation, right, is, or the, the uh, what do you call the inverse correlation since they're negative, right? It's sort of stronger down here and then getting sort of weaker, right? Because it's trending up towards yeah, less dis in the direction of theta. Yeah. It's so becoming less disassortative. Yes. Yeah. This this is sort of oh we have a yeah. So I'm guessing if you could make the assumption from this, it would be that like just you form a new node added to the graph. But the only connection with few connections. Mm, I, that's, I, so that could be possible, right? That could, I mean, some sort of adding, adding new nodes uh, that have, you know, um, you know, maybe say, say you're adding like new nodes, but they're connecting to like high degree nodes or something like that, right? But they don't have many connections of their own. It's like that's, you know, so that's, well, that's actually increasing this sort of thing. So like, is that because their density is drooping? Um, ah. More new nodes are being connected, but right. the graph is less dense. And, that, and, that's, so that, and that's a very good point, right? Because in addition to these metrics, right, we should sort of look at these metrics when paired together. What do they mean, right? We have a sortativity, but we also have a density. What about the two together? What story do they tell? So that's possible too, right? Because we're seeing the density drop, it is going to impact your other metrics as well, right? Yeah. And a, a, a key point that I'm sure, uh, glad that everybody uh, you know, uh, observed right away is, of course, that because the, these, these graphs are evolving over time, mm -hmm. right? So we might have nodes coming in or going out, right? So yeah, the, the influx of nodes uh, you know, of a certain type you know, could affect uh, assortativity or density. Uh, you know, just influx, they say a, a big influx of nodes without creating a lot of connections could be why that could decrease the density. Right. So, 
And so yeah, so one of the keys here also is that we see these metrics and these metrics give us some insights into what may be happening, but after we use them spur for further exploration, gives us an idea of where to start looking, right? It's like, yeah, it's very sort of exploratory data analysis type of stuff, right? <laughs> So without knowing, just this comment, without really knowing what's going on in terms of the edges and nodes appearing or, and or disappearing, you can't give a solid interpretation to density just you know, in, in that respect. I mean, you can interpret, of course, what it actually means, you know, which is that it's the number of, you know, it's a, it's a ratio of, you know, uh, um, I want to say no bit. So it's the ratio of the number of uh, possible, sorry, the number of actual edges over the number of possible edges. You can always interpret it that way. But um, you, know, you can't say anything about the number of, the raw number of nodes or the raw number of edges. Well, we're not, not, not that it, it doesn't know zero. <laughs> so, so that's, you mean like something like, you mean yeah. something like, okay, you have like, like this type of increase sort of network, and then you just add something with like a, a lot of, no, 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 just this one, just this one, just to kind of spoke. If you add, that, should, that should increase the sort of tip if you add like one here because now you have a node connected to a node that's similar to G. Just add this. Yeah, so if you add like one here, here, that should increase your sort of tip. Uh, also, yeah. if you take out nodes with high like, degree. Yeah, if you knock out a bunch of nodes with high degree, then that will make, every, like, that will increase the similarity among the remaining nodes. Right? Would that yeah. increase density? If you took if you took out uh, a, a node, node with a high degree, that should decrease your density. Mm -hmm. Now you have an overall less. Because you only took because you only took out one node. But you took several edges. But you took out several edges. Yeah. Right. So your density would drop. Yes. 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 So we're talking about nodes and edges. Are there other factors outside of those as well in, in these numbers or that we're looking at? Or were, they're, they're just nodes and edges being added. Oh, um, so in terms of how the graphs change over time? Correct. Yes. Yeah, it's just nodes and edges okay. being added or, or taken away. Okay, I'm just curious. I'm because I'm seeing a lot of spikes and peaks and valleys yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, that's the thing, right? So there's definitely a lot of noise, especially right. Yeah. If you look at the clusters, right? It's kind of mm -hmm. crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so there's yeah, and one of the things also that's one of the things also with looking at these metrics, right? Is that Sometimes you can't tell if it's the nodes are going away or if the edges are building. So you get an idea of the general graph change, but you're not getting an idea of like what specifically is happening, right? And that's why we always do this is just a general intuition into what to look into next. Because the metrics give us good structure, but they can only tell us so much. Mm -hmm. And several things could explain these metrics, absolutely. Okay, thanks. Um, I want to look at the power law for that degree distribution. So that's just a, just a couple of things. So, so clustering, if we look at clustering, so it was pointed out that there's there's no clear trend in terms of the clustering. So we just see like a, like a lot of wild fluctuations in clustering. And by the way, we can we'll be able to see these graphs. These graphs are actually a relatively a small number of nodes. So we can, yeah. if we have time, we can we can show you the visualizations of the graphs themselves. So you can see if this is you know how this might be playing out. Right. So uh, and then the sortativity again is becoming. Becoming less dis disassortative over time. I'm sorry, sorry uh, yes, less disassortative over time. What does that mean? That means that well, it started off in a highly disassortative state, so it's it's these you know kind of star graphy or possibly right, like you know like a, that's a highly disassortative uh, uh, condition, right? You have like a high, you know one very influential node connected to a few like not so influential nodes. So there might be some, that type of situation. But over time, maybe less so, right? But still, it's kind of tending to be that type of situation because, again, all these are negative, exactly. right? Because with surgery data, you don't have to rely on, on a special interpreter knowledge. So, so you, so you, so you, you sort of just disassociate connection. Uh, yeah. Because, because with, yeah. with search engine, Oh, you know, like in terms of like our needs to connect to others for information and yeah. so that kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of sort of like, <coughs> kind of like a decentralization. You might call it like kind of a decentralization yeah. uh, trend or something. Yeah. So in the graph, the graph that we saw before with the degree, basically it's very certain to be that the degrees are spread out through the graph, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, well, so you mean like a uniform, kind of like a, yeah, like, all, the, like all the bars are roughly the same height? Yeah. <coughs> Well, cause, no, because you still have like, so, well, 
Yeah, no, yeah, 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 you're right, absolutely, yeah, 100%. Yes. Sorry, long story short, yes. For your story, too. Yeah, yeah, they write it. So, when it's close to one, the whole Sosuna degree can be directly connected. The close to negative one, you have the same thing. What does that mean? Uh, the right answer. Oh, this is, did this edit? I swear I made that edit and I put not. Yeah. I might, I, have, I, might, I might have loaded a slightly older version. It might be. Uh, I mean, so, okay, obviously I copied oh, the this slide and pasted it, 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 it out here. Yeah. This edit made it in, the negative one, but maybe the not didn't make it in somehow. Oh, the not. So yeah, it should be a not. Yeah. And other similar do tend to not be? Tend not to be the negative one. Right, yeah, yeah. tend not to be. Yeah. Okay. Tend to not. Tend to not to be. Tend not to be. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. To be or not to be. There we go. Right. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Right. Oh, thank you. All right. Good eye. Yes. Good eye. Good eye. Good eyes. Okay. Good eyes. Are happy too. <laughs> Good eyes. Okay. It's on your So okay. So now we want. Okay. So we have this. We have this. We have this. All right. So we have a Okay. What time are you on? Uh, time's not bad. We're about twenty. We've got about uh, maybe mm -hmm. twenty minutes left. Yeah. All right, so kind of a lot. So, so okay, again, it's a, a time series, right? Time one, time two, time three, time four, so on and so forth. Right, the, uh, the y-axis here actually are just the raw counts themselves, so you can kind of get an idea how many of those there are just by looking at the y-axis. Right? And they'll be the same just to make sure that they work for Yeah, everything, we kind of, we're, we're pretty careful with the scaling. Yeah. Even with the, uh, like, the line graphs and the trend lines, they're all on, if not the same scale, the same, uh, the length of the range is the same. So, so, so we try to scale out, you know, like anything that would be misleading. So, all these pictures are always on the same scale. Huh? If you hit F11, you'll get more screen real estate. A full screen? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, well, that. <laughs> that didn't work out very well. There you go, even more. Woo! Something going on in the outliers, right? 
Yeah, it does look like bar belch, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, what I, that's the one I was uh, kind of hitting at. Yeah, number six. Yeah, so yeah. these two are the, like the same, right? Like, so what does this mean? It's like, okay, degree one, there's a slayoff. Uh, oh, actually, so yeah, because yeah, you have like a big group well, of degree ones versus a big group of degree two. So could that mean barbell? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. But in any case, that, that's the one, this is the one I was thinking of because it's like all of a sudden in the degree, it's like the degree one nodes just took a plummet, right? It was like half, ch chopped in half, right? Like, why is that? Like, from here, here there's like a 19 degree node, degree one nodes. And then here there's like not. But does it I think mean that there's more scarring than because there is more like the one. Right? Yeah. 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 A lot of I mean that's not the only way to have degree one though. It's the other, you know, but right? There is it. I mean the top constellation, there's one constellation with one star spoke, how many spoke? Yeah. And maybe here in data numbers times six there are two huts. Many spoke. Uh, I don't well, know, you, one and two. Well, but see, yeah. this is degree two notes, right? That's this is degree two notes. That's two, yeah. And these are degree one notes. So it's not necessarily a split in that way. But, but you know, a lot of low degree notes could be indicative of, like, a, uh, you know, in combination with, the, you know, with, and, and this is the essence of the power law, right? the power. is that you have a bunch of low degree nodes in combination yeah. with a bunch of, like a few high degree nodes, right? So that's that's the essence of what this shape is saying. Right? So that's that's something like a star graph, right? Or a con some combination of star graphs. Right. Yeah. star graphs. Yeah, let's just let's just okay. look at the grid. Yeah, the cheat go to the yeah. Yeah, we're gonna tell you what it is. Okay. Okay. So this yeah. this was criminal <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this is where we look at the criminal These are this is compiled from uh, data uh, collected by police. Uh, uh, doing wiretapping of a, uh, a drug cartel. So uh, the, the nodes were you know, connected if they were having phone conversations yeah. and were not connected. No. Yeah, and you can see with every phase we have associated police activities, including seizures and amounts yeah. seized. So an interesting, an interesting thing is that the, the police would not arrest anybody. That's a, that's a unique aspect of this. Uh, of this uh, Investigation. They didn't arrest anybody until the very end. So any change to the network is not due to arrests. It's due. It's due to other possible, other, possibly other actions like the seizures of the of the drug shipments. So like basically, they know that they're being you know investigated, right? How does that knowledge impact the, the network, right? So does it become less centralized, more centralized, or you know what, right? So. <clears throat> Does the boss, you know, just decide to just take over everything, uh, or does he delegate, right? Uh, like what's, like what's the reaction? Yeah. So, <clears throat> so, all right. So let's see the graphs. Yeah. So here's the actual graphs. Keep in mind that what the density is going down. There's a low. There's a kind of a, a, a mild downward trend in density. What does that mean here? There was a like a, as you as you're saying like, a, you know, the assortativity looks like it's going up, but there's kind of a lot of noise. So. It's hard to say. Uh, and the clustering is just sort of all over the place, right? So let's just kind of see how and, it works. And notice the star graphs, right? We talked about the star graphs, slightly messier. We see a star graph, ego graph, right? Again, common influencer and in criminal networks, right? Crime boss, right? Everyone's called a crime boss. Little action of a perfect, but for the most part, very much dominate, right? And that's like, that's phase one. We kind of see how the network starts to yeah, yeah. it's a little messier. We we'll kind of see some of what's happening, and and we're in thinking in terms of density, by the way, right? So it's it might be easy to say to look from at graph one and then look at graph two and say there was an increase in density, right? But it's actually it looks busier because of a lot of nodes were added, right? So keep in mind when you're looking at a plot of density, you know it doesn't really tell you about the the raw the raw numbers of nodes and edges. So just so that FYI. So overall, the density is increasing. 
see here, we see some interesting action happening here, almost like maybe some other ego networks starting to form. Something's going on. I keep on, I keep on from that, I keep on thinking of the Godfather. Yeah, yeah. And so, and throughout, you'll notice there's just there's there's a lot of you know the, stuff, the, the clear star shaped you know stuff. Yeah. Right? Star, star, kind of and star sometimes star. and there as it grows, that you get multiple stars. Star. And these lines denote phone calls, right? These yeah. are all like phone calls. That's all into contact with them. Yeah. There's enough data, but there's data to construct a weighted graph, which would you know indicate like how often or how long the communication is or something like that. Yeah. We didn't do that. So. Yeah. You could also imagine like a directed graph coming out of this, right? Yeah. It's like, is it the boss is just calling everybody, like the micromanager, hey, hey, you know, hey, hey, yeah. you get, yeah. or, so, or so is it one of the apps? Yeah. 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 What's a cap on? I think 12 yeah. was, was 12. Do you remember what the uh, what 12 was? I mean, all, all this info is actually like in the, in the, in yeah. the cap. You can look it up and see who the, who the one's definitely the boss. Those are. Yeah. yeah, one is the boss. He's the, the original mastermind of the, of the uh, organization. Twelve, uh, as I recall, is is uh, a, a, an associate that came later when they started decided to change up uh, their their business. Uh, and he was from Colombia, so um, they changed. They sort of changed their product. Oh, we're all of They started selling And then it's time. Here's twelve right here. Yeah, he is moving into the family. And I see 12 is like, yeah, you see that? So 12 is like, 12 is making some friends. These are funny little insights you can have. Yeah. What happened to 29? Huh? What happened to 29? What happened to 29? We don't talk about 29. <laughs> 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 29. He swims with the fishes. Yeah. 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 Yeah
fit or not. So yeah, there are definitely more insights. And this is all, by the way, in Canada, Montreal, Canada. The investigation was was uh, mount, uh, uh, mounted by the mounted, by the mounted police. But the, 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 uh, if you're familiar with the Mounties in, in Canada, that was Canadian crime. Huh? Canadian crime. Well, apparently it's very similar. Uh, yeah, they don't have the Mounties on it. And also the, the bird, I guess it was the Montreal local police too. So the Mounties are like some version of federal police or something, I guess. And, and the local police in Montreal. Anyway. Yeah, we don't have it. So, so how, how do we access this? Oh, mm -hmm. oh uh, so go ahead and uh, just get this QR code. And I can, I can also just like paste the link into this court also. Yeah, you, not, yeah. yeah. But because you QR code, it'll take you to the to the group's uh, LinkedIn page and there's a link to this like, collab. But I can also just paste the link to the collab directly into this court. Okay. Yeah, and I can get access to this. Because yeah, I definitely want to do play around with this. And, so, um, yeah. Well, for the information, for those of you who want to know, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, um, network access the package we use. Again, we have other packages. This is easy to use, but the other ones that are like that are more powerful and can do a lot more heavy lifting. Uh, this is a book um, that does uh, uses mainly network X um, and uses uh, a lot of data online. So there's a real analysis. The metrics. Okay. And then Caviar is the uh, the project that we're looking at the criminals, and this is a book about. The Caviar Project with other projects. Look at criminals who grab food. And, and then just some short overview videos on this one. Very cool. Cool? Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Did, did you think this was like kind of something that you would just use and it's a little, just enough math? <laughs> Do you think it was like a, maybe maybe potentially applicable to something you would do? Do you think maybe we could have been a little bit more pragmatic with stuff you needed to do? Because we want to try to keep things on a right level for like something you think you could use. I thought it was great. Okay. It's advertised wedding. Okay. Just enough interest. Just enough interest. <laughs> 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 you guys really covered a lot. Yeah. But it wasn't overwhelming. And uh, we actually pruned a lot. We had yeah, we actually pruned a lot. We <laughs> were just like, we started cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting. Yeah. Honestly, Jesse was very helpful. Jesse, 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 Jesse played the tough one to cut. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
this would be 1B, and 1A maps to 1B, 2A would then um, say map to 2B. And if you can get a mapping in such a way that every node maps to the other side, and all of the edges connecting the two nodes are also have a rough equivalent from the other, well, exact equivalent, yeah, yeah, yeah. then it's, then it's yeah, the embedding space though has to 